Hello friends, this video on reproduction in plants part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now as I was mentioning just now, based on the number of cotyledons, there are two types of seeds, dicotyledonous and monocotyledonous. Di, di means two. The word di itself means two. So these are the seeds with two cotyledons and monocotyledons are those with one cotyledon because mono means one. So let us roughly look at the structure of a dicot seed. So seed will contain a seed coat, hilum, micropyle. So these are the three important parts of a dicot seed. So let us look at these three parts on the uh, on this picture of the seed. So seed coat as I said it is nothing but the outermost covering. Now the seed coat also has two layers. So it has a very thick outer layer which is called testa and then it has a inner thin layer which is called tegmen. So testa and tegmen together form the seed coat. So one is a thick layer and the other one is a thin layer. Then comes the hilum. So basically seed coat is here. It's a covering of the seed. So it protects the seed well inside. Next is hilum. It is a scar on the seed coat through which the seed was attached to the fruit. Now what was seed? Seed was nothing but ovule before and this ovule was present inside the ovary. So the ovule and ovary were attached at a point. So that point is now left as a scar because the fruit is gone only the seed is left. So that scar is hilum. So here this one is hilum. Micropyle is a small pore above hilum. So in the hilum itself you have a very small pore which is called micropyle. So these are the important structures which can be seen on a dicotyledon seed. So besides this as I have mentioned before also it has cotyledons, radical and plimule because without these it, it will not be capable of giving rise to a new plant. So cotyledons are the seed leaves which help in food storage and it provides nourishment and nutrition to the developing radical and plimule because radical will give rise to the entire root system and plimule will give rise to the entire shoot system. So radical is the embryonic root that is the tiny root of the embryo and plimule is the embryonic shoot which is the tiny shoot of the embryo. So this plimule will give rise to form the shoot system of the plant and the radical will form the root system of the plant. So that was, so that was all about seeds. Now let us talk a bit about the fruit because fruit is something which we all eat in our day to day life. So let's see how is a fruit formed. So a fruit is nothing but a ripened ovary after fertilization. So like after fertilization the ovule becomes seed and the ovary becomes the fruit. So if you look at a flower, so inside the flower you have the ovary and this ovary is nothing but the, this ovary transforms into the fruit. So this is the fruit. So when you think of this pomegranate, so this is actually the fruit and inside you have the seeds. Now when talking about seeds, they are extremely significant because they are useful in agriculture. They help us to grow a lot of plants. So they help plant species to be colonized in different areas. So if you have seeds, the seeds can be, uh, seeds are portable. They can be transported from one place to another. So if you want to grow plants or if you want to grow crops in a particular area, you can just plant the seeds there and you'll get a lot of plants. So that's how seeds being portable and easy to transport you can actually plant trees in specific areas so that is one advantage of seeds seeds also provide nourishment to the young seedlings now of course that's because seed contains the embryo and it also contains the cotyledons and the cotyledons contain food it helps in food storage so that's how it is capable of providing nourishment to the seedlings because without this nourishment the seedlings will not be able to grow to form a new plant ensure protection to the new embryo. Now the seed, it, its structure is such that it has a, a very protective thick, uh, thick coat called the seed coat and this seed coat ensures that the embryo remains well protected. So that is another important advantage of seeds. So you see having seeds is very advantageous because first of all it gives us the flexibility to grow plants wherever we want. It also keeps the embryo very very safe inside it. 
It is also capable of providing nourishment so that the plumule and the radical can actually grow to form the root and shoot system of the plant. Results in variations with new genetic combinations. Now these seeds, it again it depends from plant to plant as you see how uh, the seed is formed. Seed is all about the embryo which is present inside and how is that embryo formed? It is formed by fusion of the male and the female gametes inside the ovule. So that fusion of male and female gamete, it, it will actually result in the formation of a cell that will contain some characters or some traits of the male and some traits of the female. In fact, there might be some new traits as well. So that's how new uh, combinations will, can be formed, variations can be seen, new traits can be seen in the newly formed plants can be easily stored for future usage. Now it is not only easy to transport seeds from one place to another, it is also very easy to store them because you know they are very convenient. It is not that they are very big and bulky, difficult to carry, it's nothing like that. They are like tiny uh, structures. So they can be very easily stored either in containers or in go downs. So it is also easy to store. Long term viability of most of the seeds, they also have a very long life. They do not get spoiled within a couple of hours or within a couple of days. So they last for years after years. So they can be stored and they can be used as and when needed. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.